I introduce my colleague, Sister Iman from Berlin, and I'm here on Saturday from Berlin, and we are doing comics together since 20 years. So, uh, we will tell you about how we make a comic story of, say, two or three pages, and I'll hand the microphone over to Sister to tell something about finding the story and doing the dramaturgy. Yeah, there, um, we start with two kinds of stories. There's um, either a character-driven story or a plot-driven story. So, um, take a plot-driven story, it's like when you want to tell a short joke or a long joke, or you uh, know already what the story is like. Then you uh, decide who's going to uh, experience the story. So, then you say it's a, a story-driven or plot-driven story. And then there's the character-driven story. It's just you have a good idea for a good character, and you think, what could this character uh, experience? Um, and you can have like a character that plays a character, that's a very sad character, whatever this character um, feels like, then the story will be wrong, because you know the character so much while inventing the story that you know what uh, can happen. So, um, take for example uh, a love story uh, or a couple. <laughs> we start with uh, a couple uh, in love with each other. And, uh, looking, yeah, uh, this one. <laughs> Hand it over to you. But yeah. well, we have this couple in love and they are looking, they are looking for a quiet coffee house to have a talk together and a glass of wine. So they. Yeah, yeah, but we have a man and a woman, so <laughs> that are in love with each other and say they are young people and want to talk about some problems about their relationship. So they sit in this quiet coffee house. And okay, that's <laughs> the situation is this that the guy wants to propose marriage to his girlfriend. <laughs> But while he begins to speak to her, a musician enters the coffee house playing on a safe violin, something wonderful and quiet. Uh, okay, this is uh, like a very old coffee house and a very big place. Um, small place, okay, it's a small place. Um, so the guy is very shy <laughs> and he doesn't know how to propose her. Then, then take the character, the character, what kind of character does this be? Uh, he, he doesn't know how to find the words, and uh, so he's very happy that this healing player appears. Um, and so um, this makes up the character when you, when you imagine how's, when how's the girl. So she's sitting there, she's probably uh, self conscious, you said. Yeah. You, you, you describe it. Okay. The girl expects him to propose marriage, and then the violinist is. Music fits wonderful for the situation. Then another musician comes in, say. Uh, so a story usually has um, three parts. Every story, even a short joke, has three parts. Um, you can divide this three parts into more parts, like five parts or seven parts. Um, the first part is the establishing of the story. That's where we find out who is playing in the story. Like um, we say it's a girl and a guy. And we say it's in a coffee house. And we say uh, he's very shy. He doesn't know how to propose her. And she's expecting it. So this is the establishing of the story. And every story has this in a way. It's pretty boring. For, for someone who's reading a lot when the story starts. Peter is 12 years old and uh, he got up the, in the morning his, door, uh, his uh, alarm clock rings. It's always much better to just jump into the story and start at a very late moment. Something happens, unexpected. This brings up a new part in the story because suddenly um, it's, it's a romantic situation but someone, a third, uh, suddenly a third person, coming to the situation. 
Okay, so they sit with them. fitting music for the proposal, but the guy can't find the right words. <clears throat> and at that moment, another musician comes in and starts playing his own thing without paying attention to the musician already here. <laughs> so a sort of musical chaos ensues. It's a guitarist who is playing rock music doesn't agree with the violinist. So the guy who wants to do the proposal uh, gets confused. <laughs> so it's a, suddenly the situation changes completely. It's a, he's in a conflict situation. Suddenly. He hopes that both the musicians will stop so he can uh, continue with his proposal or on the other side all the romantic atmosphere is suddenly turned into a kind of musical battle between two musicians. Okay, the guy is forced to speak louder, <laughs> which he can't really do. He shouts his proposal at his girlfriend, or at least tries to. <laughs> then, then musician number three enters the coffee house without paying attention to the two already there. Say it's a trumpeter. So then we have the second part of the story already. Uh, began and this is called conflict. So what is conflict about? We have first, we have the guy. He wants something. He wants to make a proposal. So his, he has an intention, a will, a goal. Or um, uh, he just has expectations of how the evening should go. But something is coming and it's, uh, that's called the, an the antagonist power. Like uh, uh, yeah, the music. So uh, he has to see how to get out of this or to, to uh, stick with this um, situation. Maybe show up or maybe uh, uh, make it like it's a very funny situation, uh, whatever. She doesn't understand. <laughs> so um, that's what a, a conflict is about. And every story is about a conflict. There's no story without a conflict. Always a conflict is when two kind of uh, intentions or forces come together. Like it's, a, it's someone you know, wanting this and another person wanting that, so we have a, a conflict. And the, the, stronger, the stronger the intention is, um, the, the stronger the antagonism can be. And uh, this also can be very, very funny. And conflict can be very, very dramatic. And uh, you can also say like someone wants to kill himself and uh, um, then uh, uh, the whole world is trying to keep him alive, for example. It's the, like a very uh, sad uh, intention, but the world responds with uh, happiness. And then also, I don't know how you feel now, because we, we don't do this very often and it's the first time that we do it like this. Um, do you want to know how the story continues? Yes. So that's also how a story works. Now comes the reason why we picked a small romantic cafe, coffee house instead of a big one. Um, the street pianist enters the coffee house, pushing his piano into a small coffee house and starts playing as well. This ruins the romantic situation. We have a cacophony, cacophony of music and the uh, guy's evening is ruined. He can't make himself understand and understood anymore. Then we near the culmination of the, of the story as a band of Mexican mariachis and the coffee house, 12 men strong. <laughs> 25 person before the men, men score. Everyone is very loud and tries to be the loudest of them all. So the guy has to make his proposal louder and louder. But, but in the general noise, uh, he can't himself, make himself understood no more. He can't say anything anymore in the noise. No, it doesn't work. She, she isn't able to hear him. And they try to get out because the coffee house is crowded by now. Very, very loud. So they, they, they fight their way out, right? They fight, they fight their way out of the coffee house. And finally, when he's shouting at the highest point of the noise, he's shouting his proposal to her. She doesn't understand. And the, the, third part, yes. the third part of the story is the conclusion. So, um, I hope that someone here wants to know how the story ends. I mean, it's not
not an end that they just get out. It's, it's um, unsatisfying. So in, uh, especially in comics, we need, uh, or we don't need it. There are also comics that don't need it, but uh, in, a, in a funny comic, it's most important. And in another story, you wouldn't say it's a pointer or punchline. Um, in, a, in another story, it can just be something that is a satisfying last sentence or a satisfying last word. And in a um, long story, this can also be like um, the solution, like uh, when you have a love story, they get together, or when you have a, um, like a, I know, a, a criminal case, the case is solved, and after the case is solved, there's still a little moment when you say, okay, goodbye, we are leaving you now, uh, the story ends. Well, Siska and I invented a story some 20 minutes ago, and we keep disagreeing about how it goes. <laughs> but my preferred end would be that they get out of the coffee house with their clothes ruined and the tatters on the noisy street and are both stone dead. Yeah. <laughs> and now they can't talk to each other anymore because they use three. This is my way of ending it. So. There could be a different ending. There could be an ending that she's upset and says, um, you, you, you took me to this terrible coffee house and they start arguing and fighting and separate each other. <laughs> The end should be a bang, <laughs> uh, but also the uh, uh, ending could be that they, uh, there's a very, very poor uh, street musician playing in harmonia um, and having his head, really having nothing to eat and playing, asking, uh, do you have some spare money? And then they say, what? <laughs> or, or he makes his proposal another time and she says, what? I can't hear you. But here is how it is a I want stories to end with a bang and a punchline, and Siska wants to tell some more and tell some more <laughs> and keep it beating out. But um, now there's the question we have a story now. So, how do we put this story? Oh, did I say it about it? Uh, how do we, do we put this story into a comic of two or three pages? When we agreed on the story, which might take a couple of months, <laughs> then we start sketching it. Say we restrict ourselves to two pages and then we start doing a storyboard to try to constrict the story to two pages and decide that we do like three, 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 three strips on a page. Okay, this is basically out. Then we try to put this story, which is probably too short, maybe add a third page. Then and try to tell the story and say so many pictures of rains, as we say. Reserve this for the title. And then we do sketch work and see how this could run. And where it's ending. And we do sketches with pencil and when we are happy with the sketches, when they are finished, this is the main work on the comic book. Then we trace them on the light table and ink them. Now I pay attention, or we pay attention, to that the pages that by side by side look harmonious together. So when I do the artwork, I pay attention that there is like, I don't know, some sort of composition running through. Maybe so, or maybe, maybe so, I don't know. We always, if we try to, to put the story into this frames, we normally start with very simple, just saying a um, uh, girl and guy in a cafe. Um, he, he wants to make a proposal. Atmosphere, um, he starts like, uh, yeah, there is something, um, it's a very special day for us today. So, uh, so this would be, uh, we could put this um, more um, earlier. So it's always about to, to cook things down uh, to uh, the minimum of what we need. Because comic is also very much reduction. It doesn't need to be so um, epic if it's a short story. So uh, we always try to put things together in um, one picture if possible. And also it's a comic, it's not a, um, a book with words, so we try to uh, use as less words as possible. Okay, 
in a comic book, in our opinion, uh, the pictures tell most of the story and the text is, uh, supports this, but the pictures don't. And we, you often, um, if, you, if it's difficult to put all this into the story, then you can start also from the, uh, from the end of the story to see what's necessary here, and then you see, okay, then I can make put this together, or erase uh, one idea, and then to make all ideas, or I need more pages. But usually you have a limit of pages, like if, they, and if you work for a magazine, and they say, uh, you have one page, and you have to do this story in one page, and you don't have more space. In our coffee house story, this would mean less musicians, and the faster escalation towards the culmination point to be strict as to one page. This also applies to doing a large comic book, like you do comic books of 64 pages, and that restricts us too. Uh, we, we can't waste too much space on things that aren't very important for the story. Вы сами такие большие истории любите, длинные, короткие. Well, we do comic albums in, in Germany of 64 pages, and we have done Four together, or five? Four and a half. Four and a half, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are used to this sort of work, but we, we both do a lot of short comics for magazines or just single cartoons for newspapers and so on. Or do just work for ourselves that is not meant to be printed or published. So. And, and to be honest, sometimes we also work for the devil. What we say when someone's paying us <laughs> for, yeah. for, for drawing a terrible uh, commercial shit. Yeah. yeah, when the fridge is empty. Then <laughs> <laughs> so we don't work for everybody. We don't work for right wing newspapers or things like this, no matter what money we pay. But we have to go to conservative papers sometimes if they pay us. If we are out of money, we have to pay rent and insurance and all that shit.